सो हेलो एवरी वन आई एम शोरदीप नंदी वेलकम यू ऑल टू फिजिकल डॉक्टर्स सो आई एम अ सेकेंड ईयर एम बी बी एस स्टूडेंट ऑफ आई पी जी एम आई कोलकाता आई हैव सिक्योर्ड डिस्टिंक्शन इन ऑल द थ्री सब्जेक्ट ऑफ फर्स्ट ईयर इट इज एनाटोमी फिजियोलॉजी एंड बायोकेमिस्ट्री टूडे आई विल बी आई विल डिस्कस द एनाटोमी पेपर वन ऑफ द डब्ल्यू बी यू एच एस यूनिवर्सिटी एग्जाम टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी फोर सो कमिंग सो इन दिस डिस्कशन पार्ट आई i so i have uh, prepared some examples so i hope you will uh, like the video so first we have the question that is a 62 year old man complaining of shortness of breath syncopal attack fatigue diagnosed to have severe mitral stenosis so uh, now they are asked that what are the components of mitral valve complex so this question this particular question was a new one it was not given in the previous year question in cbme curriculum they have given that the valves are important and from there it this question has come okay so uh, so here is you have to write this points that is the mitral valve it is atrio vent uh, at, uh, atrio ventricular valve so it consists of the left atrial valve the annulus that is the fibrous ring the leaflet that is the cusp the caudate tendony uh, the papillary muscle and the left ventricular valve so these three, so these four are the component of mitral valve complex so these things you have to write now uh then next question is the types of caudate tendony and draw a level diagram so for a level diagram you can use this diagram uh, which is a very uh, well uh, marked diagram that is i found in this diagram from the internet and also you can see this diagram where the component of mitral valve complex is there uh, remember in anatomy diagram holds the holds the most important mark if you don't know anything just prepare a diagram and you will get the marks in vishram singh you have this diagram uh, that is that it is a tri it is of tricuspid valve but it is also applicable to every valve so this diagram if you can draw if you have drawn this diagram then it is okay they will give you marks with, with this now coming to the types of caudate tendony so this uh, question was an unexpected one so there are two types of caudate tendony that is true and false among the true caudate tendony there is some commissural cauda and some leaflet cauda now leaflet cauda as this is a mitral valve so mitral valve has anterior and posterior leaflet so these have this type of cauda present here i am not discussing this in details next question was the source of development of interventricular septum so in first year i followed yogesh shuntake and it ha and uh, it in page number 177 it has clearly written that uh, writer short note on the development of interventricular septum so this is how it has written and here is a diagram which shows the development of interventricular septum so this was a expected one because previous in previous year question also interventricular septum has come has came okay so now uh, the second question a my elderly man suffering from carcinoma of prostate was diagnosed to have metastasis in the vertebra so justify the metastasis using your knowledge of anatomy here it has given three marks so you are here you have to explain that how it has just uh, how it has metastasized that is through which plexus through which root it, it has metastasized to vertebra and then you uh, and then you have to give a diagram that diagram holds one marks also so in vishram singh there is a small box here that is prostatic through prostatic venous plexus it goes through the vertebral venous plexus that is the venous plexus of batson and therefore it uh, metastasized to vertebral column and also brain so brain part is not asked here you you have to just write the venous plexus of batson here that is the important point and then a small diagram that is here you draw a prostate diagram then through venous plexus it is going to the vertebra so this is how you uh, you would get a better marks okay next question next uh, question it has briefly described the capsule lobe relation of prostate line this is a this is a uh, it is this is a question that is uh, uh, repeated many a times so this i think this would not uh, Uh, this would not have made some difficulty in answering then the microanatomy that is they have asked about the microanatomy so this uh, already have been discussed in the hist in your histology classes so uh, it is very it is um, easy i i would say this question was a uh, expected one and uh, easy prostate gland is a very important for your exam now next number 2 classify the multicellular gland according to the secretory mechanism then example with diagram the difference between serous and mucous snake these these two question are given 5 and 5 marks so uh, answering these two question would uh, would be a much difficult so uh, the multicellular gland it was taken from the general anatomy that is the merocrine secretion apocrine holocrine and cytocrine then you have to give the diagram of that glands then again so th that was the based on the secretory mechanism not that alveoli acinus wala so 
this is you have to uh, then you have to give the example and diagram and then again um, this uh, diag explain the dia with diagram the difference between serous and mucous acini this is also this was also easy serous and mucous acini you can uh, in histology class it was uh, taught that uh, serous acini is mainly prevalent in parotid gland then mucous acini was mainly prevalent in sublingual gland so through that example you can um, differentiate that give some point that is in par in serous acini there is uh, zymogen granule etc etc okay so that was completely from general anatomy okay uh, then number b describe the lumbrical muscle of the palm under the following heading so this was a very repeated uh, question from the previous year question so lumbrical which type of muscle is is that is the intrinsic muscle of hand then here is the diagram which is from vishram singh this was a very easy question i i think uh, many of you have answered this question very easily then uh, next question that is the classify the cartilage so classification of the cartilage uh, i would rather uh, give you a example how you could uh, write this so uh, so uh, this is from um, general anatomy now uh, for the diagram you can uh, you, uh, it is uh, well taught in your histology classes then best describe it with a table so you in one part you write the characteristic then what type of um, then what are the characteristics of hyaline then elastic and then the fibrous cartilage and diagram diagram is again this this question is fully from histology this question was fully from histology and i think this is also a very expected question uh, because cartilages are important to know then uh, short note on the folding of embryo so for, for regarding folding of embryo this was again a question from embryology that is general embryology so folding of embryo in embryology some basic preset you have to uh, keep in mind that is in every embryology question first you have to write the event start date then what happens in that part that is what is uh, what happens during folding of embryo so the events that is from uh, in point wise manner you have to write then the diagram in embryology the diagram is the main thing if you have not given diagram you won't get marks suppose in five you will get only two maximum because diagram holds a very important thing if you have only drawn the diagram then congratulations you will get better marks so uh, again this is for this is from the yogesh shontake so it generally uh, so the folding of embryo start in the third week and these there are very various um, various uh, events occur here. here here is the diagram here here is a uh, very easy diagram so in yogesh shontake you get a very artistic diagram and you get a very easy diagram so that's why i followed yogesh shontake so during the folding one is you have to give the diagram of anterior posterior folding that is the craniocaudal folding and another is the lateral folding so these two diagram you have to give then only you can get uh, a better marks okay now communication is a fundamental view it is from your edcom class i won't this i won't discuss this now coming to the explain why many uh, many of my junior uh, complains me that we cannot uh, write the explain why we cannot uh, explain uh, much about it because uh, there is nothing to uh, write much about it so for uh, so the so i would rather say that how to tackle this question is that you write everything you know okay so first describe the uh, for example i i would uh, rather go with this example that is ovary experiences an incomplete journey during its descent so first you describe the descent of the ovary then you say that why it uh, covers an incomplete journey that is why it is why it stays at the uh, level of the abdomen so huh. so here uh, i have written here that why uh, first you explain the descent that the gonads are uh, formed near the lumbar region then it descend along with the gubernaculum now there are two attachment with the ovary one is the ligament ovary which is attached with the uterus so it keeps hold uh, it keeps the ovary there at the position and prevents it descent and then there is a suspensory ligament ovary with the lateral pelvic wall so it cannot descend down through the pelvis these are the two reasons then you just draw a diagram showing the suspensory ligament of ovary and, and the uh, sorry ligament of ovary and the suspensory ligament just draw these two ligament in a diagram you will i i uh, assure you that you will get a uh, very good marks that is um, uh, uh, in four you can get three marks in this if you give a diagram if you don't give a diagram then marks will be uh, very difficult to get then so in 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 every explain why question if you give a diagram then it can, then it will give you a good marks then stab wound at the root of neck will lead to tension pneumothorax and surgical emphysema surgical emphysema is nothing but 
it is uh, it is also called a subcutaneous emphysema that uh, if you stab near the root of the neck then the sifshan fascia will be lost and there will and underneath that there is the cervical pleura so, so the cervical pleura will be severe then so if the pleura is damaged then the air will gush into the pleural cavity and it will lead to tension pneumothorax so that is the reason of tension pneumothorax then you have to give also give the reason of surgical emphysema which is also known as subcutaneous emphysema that is air will be will be trapped in the subcutaneous region near the root of neck because this is due to the property of the sifshan fascia that it prevents the uh, it, it raises the intrathoracic pressure during ex, uh, during respiration so if that sifshan fascia is severe so it is so it lead to the so it cannot resist the in, increase in intrathoracic pressure uh, pressure during the respiration so it lead to the puffing of the root of the neck so you will find that the root of the neck is puffed here so that is the reason of surg surgical emphysema or subcutaneous emphysema you give a diagram that uh, here is the neck so here you have done some injury the sifshan fascia it is attached to the cervi seven cervical vertebra to the lower border of the uh, lower border of oh, sorry the inner border of the first rib then that is lost and then these and that consequences will happen so a very uh, cartoonistic diagram will also be helpful now then a palpable nodule in axilla of an elderly should be properly cared it is because of the metastasis from breast ca that that, that thing you have to explain that and draw the diagram that is here here is the breast so here you have the axillary lymph node so you have a very good diagram in the vishrams thing that the breast is divided into four quadrants that is the upper outer quadrant lower outer quadrant upper inner quadrant lower inner quadrant so this this from this quadrant if there is some lump or some metast or some lesion here so that tumor uh, lesion that is a, that, that cancer cell can metastasize through lymphatic route through this uh, axillary lymph node that is why we need to monitor uh, that is why it is a very it is a situ uh, it is a very uh, worrisome condition for the lady if metastasis happen then it is a uh, carcinoma and, and i think there is some of you know that that is through, through your basic knowledge you can tell that if if metastasis has happened then we have to give her radiation therapy chemotherapy so that complicates the case that is the reason why it should be properly cared you have to uh, you have to uh, you have to emphasize on the care part then cervical rib may be associated with thoracic outlet syndrome that is cervical rib it compresses or stretch or pushed up the subclavian artery and the lower trunk of brachial plexus that is due to the thoracic uh, outlet syndrome occur it is uh, i think here it would be some correction here that is it is not thoracic outlet it would be inlet syndrome because this part is the thoracic inlet right then vic that is volkman ischemic contracture followed by soft supracondylar fracture of humerus this is one of the most easiest question that has been repeated several times in previous year i need not to explain this thing because in this uh, in the supracondylar fracture of humerus there is uh, there is damage to the brachial artery and that is why there is uh, loss of blood to the brachial artery and there uh, occurs a ischemia at that region and due to that ischemia and fibrosis there is a contracture formation so you have to give the consequences and the diagram that is in vishram singh we have a very good diagram so um, now coming to the mcq part okay so um, the neurovascular plane of anterior abdominal wall lies between which muscle and fascia membrane it is obviously this you have to remember uh, that is between the internal oblique and transversus abdominis this is you have to remember this is option b is the answer internal oblique and transverse abdominis then all the following features are seen in neuron of the dorsal root ganglia except that they are multipolar because the dorsal root ganglia it is not a multipolar neuron it is a pseudo unipolar neuron which of the following is not a branch of posterior cord of brachial plexus that is dorsal scapular nerve it is a direct it directly it, uh, it directly uh, originate from the root of the uh, fifth cervical nerve then a patient with external hemorrhoid level of pain while passing the stool the nerve mediating this pain that is the external hemorrhoid part it is the every sensation from that part is uh, carried out by the pudendal nerve then fracture around the anatomical snub ball that is this portion this portion here it is uh, due to fall on the outstretched hand involve the distraction because of the distraction so um, if you this was a analytical question and uh, if you, you have to just think about the arrangement of the carpal bones so scap so if someone falls in a outstretched hand then the scaphoid will distract with the trapezium which is present anterior to that so this would be the answer 
trapezoid trapezium cannot occur because you know that in anatomical snuff box there is the most common fractured bone is the scaphoid so scaphoid will be the answer now why lunate is not the answer because lunate is a very small one present beside so it will not have some distraction it will only have some distraction with trapezium so uh, logically if you think that scap then scaphoid trapezium would be the answer now uh, regarding so this question i could not uh, answer because of this hand uh, i would skip that question in case of perinephric abscess the fluid collects in so perinephric abscess means uh, around the nephron so it is uh, so it is between the renal fascia and the renal capsule this would be the answer now uh, this answer you could have uh, could have think in a very logical manner that is between renal cortex and renal capsule this would have not been an answer because renal capsule is a part of the uh, part of the parenchyma of kidney so there cannot be an abscess I mean, uh, there cannot be a perinephric abscess. Perinephric means around the nephron. That is, it must be uh, outside of the capsule. So, uh, there is only one option left. That is, between the capsule and fascia. That is very easy to answer. Then, regarding bronchial vein, incorrect observation is that uh, it is uh, that both superficial and deep vein drain into the uh, right atrium. You have to know that deep vein uh, drains into the left atrium or pulmonary vein. Hmm, this you have to know. Then which two embryological structure forms the bilaminar disc? Bilaminar means two lamina. So there is the epiblast and hypoblast. This is very easy from general anatomy. Regarding rectus sheath and its content, content the true true statement is that during uh, that the posterior wall of the rectus sheath is adherent to the rectus abdominis muscle. No, it is not adherent. The anterior wall is adherent with the rectus abdominis muscle. During the surgery, the rectus abdominis is retracted laterally to expose the posterior wall of the sheath. Yes, it is exposed laterally. There is a reason behind that because if you uh, do not uh, if you do not uh, retract it laterally then how could you visualize the posterior sheath posterior wall then the lower part of the anterior lamina of the rectus sheath is thinner than the outer part no it is false the lower part is more thicker than the uh, than the uh, other parts then the inferior epigastric artery enters the uh, rectus sheath behind the arcuate line no it, it enters the uh, rectus sheath above the arcuate line there is a very good diagram in the in the uh, vishram singh which shows like this that here is the anterior wall here is the arcuate line and the rectus she enter like this through the rectus abdominis muscle. So, this is not the answer. So, uh, B is the answer actually. So, this is all about the paper discussion of uh, part 1 of the paper 1 of the anatomy. So, the paper 2 I will upload that later uh, because there I have to explain some more. So, still till then stay tuned and enjoy your vacation. Okay. And thank you for watching the video. Please subscribe Quizical Doctor for more updates regarding MBBS.